Hello, my name is Dirk Fischer from Hilshire. And in this video tutorial, I want to present the dual port memory, um, which is used to exchange data between the application side and the communication side in your device. Um, let's have a look at the block diagram first of NetX90. And um, this dual port memory is physically located on the communication side of NetX90. Um, we have explained in other video tutorials already this separation here between the application side and the communication side. And here we have a, a, a memory, a RAM, more than 500 kilobyte, and we use a small portion, 32 kilobyte, um, as a dual port memory. And now depending on the use case, um, this dual port memory can be accessed either from the outside world via our host interface. You remember we have this um, companion chip use case where we use an external host controller to access NetX90 and this white arrow here is, is connected to this interface and the host interface make access to this RAM possible. This is one way and the other way for the single chip solution is we have an internal channel to the DPM. So if our application runs here on the application side of NetX90, we have this channel internally to access the dual port memory. Now let's consider this hardware first. So we want to talk about the hardware aspects of this dual port memory. Um, if we zoom into this functionality, we see we have two fundamental ways to connect an external host controller. We have the parallel interface called DPM, dual port memory interface, which is very flexible. Um, and we have a serial way, SPI communication, just a few signals, MOSI, MISO, S-Clock, chip select. And there is a, a sequencer, an intelligent module, which receive commands from the outside and translate it to memory access via an internal bus to the dual port memory. Um, the features of this interface, um, yeah, it's an SPI interface, runs up to 125 megahertz. Um, and it's also possible to use it as a quad SPI interface. In this case, it's limited to 33 megahertz of clock frequency. The SPM, serial dual port memory interface, is, acts always as a slave. So your external host controller is always the SPI master. And you can configure this interface very flexible um, by means of hardware configuration. So to access this dual port memory, you want to read and write data. And if you want to do this over a serial interface, you have to define commands to do this. So on the next slide, I show you um, the very simple protocol between the host controller and the NetX chip um, to access this memory wire SPI. Um, you see the MOSI line, master out, slave in, and the signal back, the so master in, slave out signal. and um, First, you have to send a command, which consists of a, a very simple first command byte. Um, and the MSB, the most significant bit specified, if we have a write access, then this MSB is zero. Or it, we, we have a read access, and then the MSB is one. Um, the rest of the command is just the address to be read. Yeah. So in this case, we have three bytes the command and the first part of the address, another address byte and another one. And uh, this is a write command. So after this address, we can immediately start to transfer the data to be written. Yeah. And in the other direction, you want to read data. We specify MSB is one, provide the data address. Uh, and now the NetX side will provide the data from this address. And there we have two options. We can um, read, um, keep the chip select active and read um, many bytes in a, in a sequence. 
So we don't have to spy, uh, specify the length of this read command. Um, you just keep chip select active and provide clock signals from the master and the NetX will provide data, data, data with incremented addresses, auto incremented addresses. And the second variant is we specify a length and say, we let's say we want to read 10 bytes. So we specify the length 10 and then we get 10 bytes from NetX. So this is the basic mechanism to access DPM from the outside world. What about the performance? Um, so this diagram shows a, a measurement result where we tested different SPI glocks. So 27 megahertz, 30.5 and just 6.75 megahertz. And we read a different um, size of I.O. data from the dual port memory. Um, so let's say we want to read 100 bytes I.O. data and we use um, 30.5 megahertz clock, SPI clock. This transfer requires about 100 microseconds. Um, and this includes kind of overhead, uh, which is um, which is necessary because we use an um, abstraction layer, the CIFIX API. Yeah? So we use a um, high-level command, which is called X-channel I read, which is part of this CIFIX toolkit driver. And um, therefore, we have some overhead and it takes about 100 microseconds to read 100 byte. Um, and if we increase the frequency, we can achieve shorter read times, of course. Um, so you, you can see if we have a typical application, let's say a um, um, Profinet device with a cycle time of one millisecond um, and you have 200 bytes of data, um, you just need 200 microseconds um, or less if you increase the SPI clock to transfer this data. So the SPI interface is not really a bottleneck. You can really use it in, in applications also with a higher demand on uh, real-time behavior. Okay, the parallel interface um, is the alternative to the serial one. Of course, you need more pins. That's a drawback. Um, but of course, it's faster. So this parallel interface is very flexible. You can configure it in a wide range. You can use 8-bit or 16-bit data, uh, multiplexed addresses, um, all kind of different access modes. So it's very flexible. Um, and um, yeah, it, it will fit to any kind of host controller. Um, of course, the speed is um, higher. So if you compare it to the serial connection, you see 100 byte I.O. data takes just 16 microseconds here in this case. So it's much faster than serial, but um, the parallel interface is required only in very rare cases where high performance is required.